interested in things that I find on YouTube. I call them YouTube hacks. And this is one of them. I've implemented quite a few YouTube hacks in my garden. Uh, although I'm trained by the RHS and I'm studying for my practical horticulture RHS level 2, um, I am fascinated by plants and cultivation and growth and uh, ideas that I find on the internet. Often they're international as well. So this idea comes from a lady in India and uh, essentially it makes a lot of sense really. It's how to get courgette seeds from a courgette. So you can see the seeds are here look. And I just need to separate those seeds and, and start to plant them. Um, it isn't working as well as I expected. I thought they'd just all break away nicely, but uh, some of them are, some of them are. So what I'm gonna do is like separate those seeds, dry them out, and then uh, plant them on. Because of the lockdown, um, it was actually the day of the lockdown that we decided to build a vegetable patch, probably a little bit panicky, you know, like trying to become self-sufficient at the last moment. I had actually sort of mentioned it to my sister, my brother-in-law, who I stay with quite a lot, This whose garden it is. Uh, you know, this is something we should do, but then we all just sort of panicked and got it already on the last day. We literally got a couple of bits of timber and uh, it was all a bit of a panic, but we did manage to build something quite respectable and quite Why? useful. The problem is, what I find in lockdown gardening is that I'll get some pieces together and then I'll think, oh no, that doesn't do the job. Um, so constantly innovating and creating in the garden. Like for this, um, you can see what happened here. Like I ran out of twine, so then I had to go to wire and then I found some more twine. <laughs> That's pretty much how the garden works for me. Um, I've got this plan. I mean, this, this patch here, you can't really see it that well, but it's got some vegetables in it and they're growing. And it's a miracle really, because like, two two months well a month ago six weeks ago there was nothing in this patch completely empty we've used uh, plugs from the nursery literally on the last day of freedom if you like we went to the nursery and we just got the plugs that were available which was a couple of cabbages and some cauliflowers i'm really glad that they were there and uh some of my toilet roll um seedlings have been put in the ground uh, the sweet corn hopefully they should go you know some things seem to be going and some things are not and we had a bit of a disaster with the tomatoes uh, but now the tomatoes are starting to recover and um, but we lost a big chunk of the crop um, it is disappointing when you lose plants um, particularly if you lose a lot of the crop but I suppose that's, that's part of the game uh, I try I try not to get too too involved in it it's like yes I am involved in it but it's like things are gonna grow or die it's very very simple and um, you know, I, I did get a bit stressed about the garden at first but I could do without the stress particularly in lockdown so I'm looking for I've been with mental health issues for quite a few years now and uh, you know these are sort of anxiety and overthinking I've tried a lot of different techniques and methodologies to get rid of it but the most effective one that I've found is gardening and sometimes it isn't even that I'm doing gardening. It's like, for example, I'm looking at the ground and I look at, and I notice an ant. I just be, my awareness goes fully into the ant or my awareness goes fully into whatever's in front of me, the plant. There's something about being close to nature that actually draws me into nature even more and is very beneficial for me. And uh, sometimes I just end up looking at the garden and just letting my mind rest and that's almost as beneficial as having, you know, some sort of productive There's crop. the constant hum of bees next to the vegetable patch, which in a way is very useful because the bees are going to pollinate the vegetables, some of the vegetables. I don't 100% understand what vegetables are going to pollinate, but I think it's good. And I do really like having that sort of like it's like having about 50 or 60 different pets in my garden and they're always they're always active and they're always reminding me of uh, life really and just growth and generation and i think that is really important in the lockdown situation is to is to allow nature to teach me that um everything has a cycle there's a beginning and an end and the lockdown will end and crops will grow 
and uh, I will grow. Decision. I had a big decision to make when uh, lockdown was initiated, whether to stay at my own home, which is a shared house, which felt a little bit too stressful, or to stay at my sister's house and cultivate the garden. But I also had a third choice in that I was um, looking at a flat in uh, by the coast, which I always wanted to do. But because I lost some income as a gardener, it didn't become possible and it became a bit of a financial risk. So I had to cancel that, which was a shame, but it only had a terrace garden. There was not any grass, no turf, no vegetable patches, no nothing. And I think in the end, I love being near the green and the lush and the verdant. And uh, I decided that this would be a beneficial place for me during the lockdown. And I am very lucky, I am extremely lucky that I have a, a lovely swing and I can look at the vegetables or I can at least get a sense of how the vegetables are doing. And we have a rose hip here. We have this lovely bush which is always really lush and verdant and uh, this is Tia the cat. Tia is a bit like me, she's pretty wild but she actually just really enjoys being outside and in nature so we get on really well. The thing I really like about gardening is that there's always little jobs to do and they're quite unexpected. Let's say I was comparing it to playing a computer game or watching Netflix or you know surfing the net or whatever. It's like it agitates my mind, it winds me up and I'm always finding something to do but never really being satisfied by what I'm seeing. With gardening, like for, for example, I never know, like it, it fulfills my sense of the unknown because I get up and I'm like, what am I going to be doing today? In the back of my mind I've got an idea, okay I'll take a courgette and uh, scrape the seeds out and get a load of courgette seeds because the nursery is not open and uh, you know, I want to reuse what I've got. I'm a big believer in using what I've got. So I found this thing on YouTube about how to get the seeds out of courgette and that's what I'm doing today. So I've soaked it and I'm just like, you can see a little bit, some of the seeds that are there. There's loads of seeds, courgette seeds. I don't know what I'm gonna be doing on a day-to-day -day basis in the garden, and that's what I really love about it. You know, it's like, it's just this incredible creative forum that um, I get to express myself in. And the benefit is, you know, I'm not, I'm just like totally absorbed in just pulling out seeds for courgettes. And that's all part of it. You know, it's all part of it. That's what I really love about it. This is another thing as well, because of the lockdown, we got caught out. We didn't have time to go and buy a greenhouse. Uh, but luckily we got this conservatory and uh, so I'm using egg boxes and eggs um, and as you can see that is actually a, a baby lemon tree I'm so excited that that's growing and um, these are oh these are Mitsuna Chinese Chinese salad leaves really they're going really well and then this is a propagation uh, area and we've got some tomato plants I think these are tumbling toms actually and um, then we've got some peppers which are growing nicely as well so they'll need to get potted on so as you can see like there's always something that that needs to be done um, but I want to approach it in a way of joy and instead of like a task list of things to do I just really enjoy what really it. amazes me about this is that six weeks ago there was nothing here it was just a seed and soil and now look we've got these beautiful tomato plants uh, which are ready to go into, ready to be potted on, and I'm probably going to do that today. This is probably one of the most important areas in the garden for me. I don't have uh, a shed or a potting shed. Well, I do have a shed, yeah, but it's it's full of stuff. It's not, a, you know, for gardening. 
So we've got this area and uh, we've got a load of stuff that we can use here. Probably one of the problems with lockdown that I'm facing is running out of compost. So um, I've got a lot of containers and not a huge amount of compost. But this is a really good example. Like my brother-in-law, in like a lot of people, when he was clearing out the cupboards, threw away this sieve. And I was like, yeah, I can keep that. I can use that. I know I can use that. I can use it for sieving fine soil, uh, which would be great for seedlings. Uh, but today what I'm going to do is use it for getting the courgette seeds out. So it's a really good example of ingenuity, how your mind comes up with different things um, and reusability as well. Um, you know, gardening really does stimulate the creative senses. Right, this is the messy bit. Some might say the fun bit. I'm just going to chuck them in there. There we go. And see what we got. Wow, look at that. Got to be about 20, 30, 40, maybe 50 seeds, something like that. I think what I'm going to do, because they've got like a slimy coating on them, which protects them from germinating. They're still really slimy, so I don't want to lose that. Um, I'm just going to leave them to dry in the sun. That's what I think I'm going to do. And then when I come back, I should have some seeds. I'll make a little seed packet and I've got my courgette seeds. I'll put some immediately into pot so you can see what I do. But for now, I'm just really happy with that end result of getting some courgette seeds. This is just a little sneak look behind the scenes. This is all I've got to work with. This is my shed area. This is my potting area, um, which, you know, it does work. Um, it's a little bit hotter in here and uh, it's raised the temperature a little bit and plants are doing okay but i think it's really only a great tip. tip when you put your seeds in i always keep the packets um i worked at tilgate uh, tilgate wall gardens did my work experience there when i was on city and guilds uh which was really cool the job center arranged that for me um a really difficult time in my life it got me in love with gardening it got me used to the basics but this woman there said, you know, you once you've done your seed, put the empty packets in the inner. Well, she used to put them in an envelope, but I put them in a box. And then you can go back and you can read on the back later on, you know, what's going to be happening with your vegetables. And more importantly, you can tell people what the variety is. Yep. So that's going to be a Jitika F1. Beautiful. The other thing that's really cool about um, keeping seed packets is, for example, today, so... I've got my courgette seeds that I'm going to get. Well, that sort of looks like a courgette packet. I'm going to use that and then put them in that. In the lockdown, you just got to make do with whatever's available. And this is what's available to me. And I'm really, really grateful that I have this space to work with. I've got plans for other things as well. Like there's this area here that we found a sort of a derelict area. And I'm thinking, mm, you know, what if we planted uh, something in here in this topsoil area just raked it over planted it and let it climb up the trees you know like it doesn't have to be uh, according to the book you can absolutely make up stuff we could easily put planters and containers here and make climbing vegetables up the walls I mean there's, there's so much that could happen here um, and also what I was thinking about doing um, was using this as a bed because that just looks to me like a little vegetable bed which would be really good for salad leaves. You know, I can see a little bit of shade there rather than on the other side of the garden, which is really, really sunny. Over here, we've got a lot of shade and that could be a really good vegetable bed. Uh, just a little light shallow bed. Um, maybe some salad greens, that sort of thing. Maybe some herbs. Uh, so, you know, my mind is just coming up with creative ideas all the time.